With the introduction of spay casting in North America came the ability to cast and turn over large flies. Historically in Scotland and the UK, they'd been using large flies for over a hundred years. We started to follow in their steps and tie our flies on these enormous three-odd hooks. I know that for me, the problem was when I was out there alone trying to land a fish with my 15-foot two-hand rod and this enormous hook I could see that it was just dangerously teetering in the side of my fish's mouth and honestly it wasn't good for the fish and it didn't make me feel very good when the hook either came out or tore the fish's maxillary. We solved this by cutting off the hook and tying in a piece of wire or monofilament or even running line in a loop so that we could loop to loop on our stinger hooks. As you can imagine, it kind of hurt to cut off the hook, especially when we were paying so much money for them. I know that for me, I started to tie on really any metal I could find, even bobby pins. So eventually the manufacturers hopped on board and came up with different product. Waddington shanks started with the design years ago, but then quickly other manufacturers followed suit. You'll have to excuse the camping hands, it's September and well, it's that time of year. Personally, I found there to be some issues with almost all of the materials. Depending on the wire, I found that often the wire would kink or crimp. If I used monofilament, it would fray. Sometimes the material would break. And if I ever bought a commercial pattern that had this braided line, even though it may start out stiff, after some wear and tear, eventually it began to sag and just kind of hang limp, even when it was swinging through the current. A great way to avoid all of those problems is to simply use a tube fly. In this demonstration, I'm gonna show you all of the advantages to tying on tubes. When I first started tying on tubes, there weren't that many manufacturers in North America. They had certainly fine-tuned this in Europe, but it took some time for the tubes to make their way here. So as a result, a lot of us were tying on well, anything we could find. Q-tips, WD-40 straws, and anything else that resembled a tube. Don't be intimidated by the amount of product on the market. The truth is that it all works well. You can buy brass tubes, aluminum tubes, and plastic tubes, but remember that the plastic tubes can also have a cone head that will help you to get that depth. The key is just know that they all work fine and they all work the same. The other thing that's come leaps and bounds over the years are our vices and our tube fly adapters. Once upon a time, you used to have a special tube vise and it, it was really intimidating for most people. Nowadays, you can just go ahead and use your regular vise, just buy an adapter, and all that you do is take the adapter, slide your tube on, put it in your regular vise, clamp it down, and you're good to go. So what are the advantages to tying on tube flies? Well, for starters, you can change out your hook size at any time. So even if you tie a fly this big, say that you're going fishing for steelhead and you need a size two hook, you can go ahead and put on a size two. But say that you then see a Chinook or a King Salmon roll in the current and you need a bigger hook. You can cut off that two and put on a two aught. Another advantage of tying on tubes is that you can set the hook anywhere you'd like within the fly. If you have a long tube fly and you're afraid of having any sort of short strikes, you can set that hook wherever you'd like near the end of the fly. Another advantage to tying on tubes is that you can stack your tube flies so that you can keep adding them until you achieve your desired length. Quick story, when I was in Iceland, I had seen this Atlantic salmon when I was standing on a bridge. I went down into the river, put on a small tube, and tried to catch it. it didn't work. So I took a second tube of the same size, slid it down my leader, and ended up catching that fish. Let me give you an example of how that might work in your own fishing. Say that you're fishing a small coastal spring creek and the water's really clear, there's no pressure, and fish are taking flies that are only about like so. But then say that you go to a bigger river and there's been rain, the water's got a little bit of color to it, and you need a bigger fly. All you need to do is take two or three of those same little flies, slide them down your leader, and now you've got a fly about like so. The point is that you will never be stuck again going to a system and feeling like your flies are either all too small or all too big. Another advantage to tying tube flies is that you can interchange your colors out. So what I like to do is tie a bunch of small tubes and a bunch of longer tubes in various colors. This way, if I go to Norway and I wanna have, say, a green and yellow combo, I just go ahead and stack on a green and a yellow. But then say I come back to BC and I wanna have a, a blue and green. 
I just take off the yellow and slide on the blue. There are no limitations when it comes to fishing tube flies. Another advantage to tying on tubes, and yes, there are more, you can change out your weight. So what I like to do is tie a bunch of tubes that don't have any weight on them, and then carry a small package of tungsten beads with me. And then when I go fishing, if I simply need to slide on some weight, again, I just slide it down the leader. If you know you're gonna need weight, you can always slide your weighted bead or cone head on in advance while you're still sitting at your tying table. Other advantages are having additional leverage when you're landing your fish. Flies last longer because you're only replacing the hooks. And also you have no set proportions when you're tying on tubes because there's no eye of a hook. And you can reuse all of your off cuts. So every time that you cut a tube down, don't throw it in the waste, just save that end piece and you can tie on it later. With intruders and intruder variations, what you'll see a lot of in the stores these days are what I call two-steppers. A two-stepper is when you have a section of volume in the front and a section of volume in the back, with typically not much in the middle, maybe just a few wraps of tinsel. With tube flies, you can just tie them all as one-steppers, and then in the event that you need a two-stepper, you can simply stack them together. To achieve the distance in the middle, you can just leave a little bit of excess tubing extending out the rear of your front one-stepper. The junction tubing used to be there so that we could slide our knot and the eye of the hook up into the tube, and then it would stay there while we were swinging through the current. You can buy tubes that have the diameter change already built in for you. If you don't want to spend the money on the built-in diameter change, you can just have two separate diameters of tubing, and then just simply slide the smaller one in to the larger one. If you prefer the mobility and the flex of the junction tubing, then there's options for you as well. I do need to note that one of the selling features of tube flies is that while you're fighting your fish and utilizing that nice short shanked trailer hook or stinger hook, the tube slides up the leader and gets out of the way entirely. Now that may not sound like a big deal when we're fishing tube flies for steelhead and salmon, but when we use tube flies for marlin and large game fish, it is important to get that enormous fly out of the way. So that said, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't worry about any of the junction tubing and I don't even worry about the diameter change. I truly just tie on whatever's handy and if the knot sets in it, great. And if it doesn't, I don't worry about it. If it's swinging through the current, the current keeps the fly nice and tight, close to the hook anyway. Mm -hmm.